Who's through look here gonna be doing my European World Championship qualifier review today. Yup, it finally ended. We got to see what win. Unfortunately they don't post all the decks that top 32 or 60 forward, but I mean the top eight is so diverse. You look at last year when it was just like all Dragon Ruler Prophecy and then like one evil swarm. But we have seven different decks in the top eight, and um there's the only there's only one deck that got two spots. Of the same thing in the top eight so that's just really interesting so let's go over um you know the top eight and stuff and then i'll go over to you know what won and you know some of the flops and stuff like that so we had obviously people were expecting this hat there's one hat deck in the top one bujin one evil swarm yeah i've been, I've been playing evil swarm on dn lately just for fun and it's 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 actually good you know light swarms are everywhere sylvans are everywhere man um it's just it's just decent we had one Girgia, only one, one Prophecy, one Light Storm Ruler. I don't really know what other cards to show. I mean, Curry Band is just so good in the deck. I mean, Triple Soul Charge, Charge of the Light Brigade, and plays the Dragon Rulers, Clips Wyvern 2. So one of this, and then the only deck that got two spots, the only deck, was Mermills. I know, a lot of people are like, oh my god, Mermills, how, how do they get two spots in the top eight? Well, I don't know, this deck is still really good, guys, and... So a lot of people that say this deck shouldn't get touched on the ban list or this deck is garbage and stuff. I don't I don't really know. But I mean this this is still a really good deck. It has a lot of good matchups. First turn Undyne just nets you so much advantage. And you know, you get to go into stuff like Leo, which is like impossible to get past. Title is a free plus one. Like every turn that lets you go for like rank sevens and more Leo plays. Like I don't get how people don't see how Mermals are just so good right now. But anyway, that's pretty much all I gotta say. A lot of diversity. I, I like this diversity. Like this deck. This deck actually looks really fun. I might try to play it, just because you know I like. I was really good with Chaos Dragons. I mean, obviously, it was the deck that got me top eight on Dueling Network back in Chaos Dragon format. And then we had freaking Prophecy Two, which we got to see that in my previous video. Sorry that that video was really laggy. I watched it, and then there was just times where the the microphone and stuff just cut out my voice. I'm, I'm sorry for that, but I mean, at least you got to see the the duel and you got to, see, you know, hear, you know, most of my commentary. One Girgia, obviously. I mean, Girgia is just consistent. Girgia is just really good. Stuff like that. Evil Swarm, like a lot of people saying Evil Swarm having that, having that good time right now. I mean, just Sylvans, Light Swarms. I mean, even stuff like Artifacts, like Mortec and Mermels, too. You see all the stuff that Evil Swarms can stop right now. You have this, this, um, this entire deck, I mean, it can even stop High Priestess, it can stop freaking Sylvans too, because Sylvans, you know, it can stop Hermitree, all that stuff, so Evil Swarm's definitely good right now, in my opinion. And, you know, the one Bujin got in there, you know, Bujins, they always got in there, I personally thought, but personally before going in this, I thought Bujins, Prophecy, or, um, Light Swarms were gonna win this. That was just what I thought. I had no... I literally did not think Mermels would even get in the top 8. That, that was just me. But the deck that ended up winning it was Mermels. If you guys don't know, it was Mermels versus Light Sworn Rollers in the finals. Mermels took it. So for anyone who says Mermels are terrible right now and they suck, well, they this literally just proved you wrong. <laughs> um, but, um, I mean, anyway, that's pretty much all I gotta say about that. It was a pretty interesting event. The live stream was awesome. The venue was pretty nice. There was, like, Caught more than a thousand people there. Um, but yeah, so let's go on to some of the other stuff that didn't see or didn't get in the top eight that, you know, probably I thought should have. So there's really only three that I had here. Now, again, these could be in the top 64 or the top 32, but I did expect, you know, these decks to be in the top eight too. And they were these guys. Let's move that out of the way. <laughs> okay. Infernities, Sylvans, and. Um, Madolshays. I definitely expected Sylvans to be in this top eight. I thought Sylvans, you know, now they can definitely get the job done. More people know how to play it, and more people are hopping on the Sylvan bandwagon. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get in the top eight this time, but um, <laughs> they still probably they still probably top the event. Madolshays too. Like I, I just feel this deck's still really good, but I mean, I guess there there is consistency issues. Like first turn Angelis, like you're really legit only good first turn play. Other than Magellan, which is just like a searcher, but I mean, still, that's like six cards that you can open up to get you get you started. And then Infernity too, 
Like just this deck's just a sack fest. It's literally just a sack fest. You, I would think there would be some lucky infernity guy who just sacks all day long with the freaking soul charge and just does does his thing. But unfortunately, um, that didn't happen. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. My European 2014, 2014 European Championship WCQ, whatever it's called, review. A lot of diversity. This format obviously better than last year's. I mean, I still, I still don't like Soul Charge, but this format is still, like, so much better than last year's. It's not even funny. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. Like, comment, rate, and subscribe. It's Dog signing out.